Hello, my name is Aloysia Jenner Bacalzo. I'm from Faithy Baptist School Division B. Today I'm going to be preaching to you about living in a world of worry. If you would, please turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. If I could describe the state of many people in our world today, I would describe it in one word, worry. You realize that, don't you? The COVID-19 crisis has shaken our world and it's just terrible the devastation it has done to many people. Maybe you're wondering, when will this end? When will we be able to live normal lives again? What if the world will never be the same? And you know what? We're not alone. Here in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus speaks in his Sermon on the Mount about worry. The fact of the matter is, is that Jesus knew that he was speaking to people who all had genuine cares in our life, and we're no exception. However, isn't our impulsive response to problems and cares in our life to be worried and anxious about them? However, by the end of this message, I want to give you three biblical truths that will help you not only to understand worry, but to overcome worry in the midst of this time. First of all, I want us to start reading in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? First of all, let's consider, number one, the reality of worry. Jesus said here in verse 25, take no thought for your life. Now let's stop right there. What did Jesus mean by take no thought? Well, the word thought meant in the original Greek text to be worried, to be anxious, to have cares. So essentially Jesus was saying to us, don't worry. Now honestly, some of us in this room are masters of worry. And I dare say, as one preacher put it, some of us even have a PhD in worry. Did, did, did you lock the door? Did, did you remember to turn off the lights? Did you, remember to, uh, did you remember to close the garage? Oh, or if you're like in my family, did you remember to cook the rice? And we just worry, worry, worry. And we ask questions of, what if? What if? What if I don't get that job bonus at work? What if I don't pass school again? What if, what if my friends don't accept me for who I am and they make fun of me? What if the doctor's report isn't so good and I've caught this terrible disease? What if I do get COVID and we get all full of anxiety? What if? What if? Listen, friend, you know what the reality of worry is? Is that Jesus never intended worry to be part of our lives. Never. Take no thought. Now, does Jesus mean that we shouldn't have legitimate concerns in our life? No, not at all. Look, I don't want you to have a car wreck and jump out and say, man, I'm happy. No, you're not. Look, Jesus wasn't talking about that when he was talking about worry. But it's when we take those legitimate concerns and turn them into burdensome cares and burdens, that's the type of worry that he's talking about here. Look, Jesus never intended that kind of worry in our lives. So then we need to ask ourselves, why do we worry? Even though we know Jesus said, don't worry, why do we worry? Well, let's continue reading in verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Notice this. O ye of little faith, not only do we see the reality of worry, but number two, the reason for worry. Do you know why we worry? The reason for our worry boils down to one thing, our lack of faith. Do you know that what worry essentially reveals in our life it's our unbelief. Students, do you realize what you're saying when you worry about that exam you're having tomorrow? You're essentially saying, God, don't trust you. Look, sir, if you're worried about your finances, your family, your job security, you're essentially saying, God, I can't trust you. I don't believe in you. How might be saying, come on, Alicious. Worry's not that big of a deal. Think about worry like this. Worry like an inconspicuous hijacker will take control of your mind. And without knowing, you will drift from God's plan and direction just because you're worried. Jesus said to us, take no thought. He didn't say that to us just because he wanted us to feel good, but it's because if we're not careful, as Charles Spurgeon put it, it will poison our minds. We have seen the reality and the reason for worry, but thankfully, Jesus lastly gives us our response to worry. Let's start reading in verse 31. Therefore, Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? What should be our response to worry? <laughs> Number one, don't worry 
about anything. Simple? You want to overcome worry? Stop worrying. Take no thought. I might be saying, come on, Aloysius. Can't be that simple and easy. And you know what? You're right. It's simple to say to you, hey, you need to stop worrying. And yo, you need to stop worrying because Jesus said to us here, take no thought. But isn't it harder to practice this concept than to preach it? Think about this. Do you know why it's hard for us to stop worrying? It's because we want the answers to our load of questions of why and what if. We worry, 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 thinking that we need the solution to our problems. And you know what? I've done that in my life before. I've asked the Lord, why, why, Lord? What if this happens to me? Or, or what if I need to do this, Lord? What, what do we need to do? But I've learned a very important lesson. Just because God's way doesn't seem right to me, doesn't mean it doesn't seem right to Him. Instead of keeping our worries to ourselves, 1 Peter 5, 7 clearly says to us, cast your care on Him. You know what that implies? It implies that we not only lay the burden at Jesus' feet, but that we leave it there. Why? Because God's way is best. Don't intend to ever pick up your worries again, friend, once you leave it at Jesus' feet. So we could stop right there, couldn't we? You want to stop worrying? <laughs> stop worrying. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He continues. Let's look at verse 33, where he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Not only do we need to stop worrying, but lastly, we need to focus on God. Do you realize when we worry what we are focusing on? We are focusing on the physical. And friend, that's the wrong focus. If we only focus on the myriad of temporal needs all around us, we are missing the point. Why? It's because we're not focusing on the Savior, the one who can solve our needs. Remember Peter, when he was walking on the water, where did he look at? He looked at the waves and the sea and the boisterous wind all around him. He wasn't looking at the Savior. Stop looking at your worries, my friend, but on your God. Well, that gives us the question, who is God to us? Look at, look at this. Look at verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet, look at this, your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Have you forgotten that God is your heavenly Father? Look, we are His children, and our heavenly Father sees our need. But not only that, He knows exactly what that need is, and He is with us in that need. We can go like desperate, hungry children to God because He is our Father. Look, if God can take care of birds, my friend, we can trust our heavenly Father to take care of every need that we have. Now you might be saying, but I can't trust God. I still don't understand why He's doing this in my life. Is really trusting God the best thing right now? Proverbs 3 verse 5 clearly tells us, trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Friends, stop leaning to your own understanding. You know what? Sometimes God quickly shows you what He's doing and sometimes He just makes you wait. And you know what I discovered? You can't lose trust in God, even though we don't know why. He's just saying to us, we need to just trust Him, and we just leave all the consequences to Him, not to us. As we finish today, let me ask you a question. What will you do with your worry? Will it be with worry or with trust? When you reach the end of your life, don't you want to know that when you have lived out your future, that instead of worrying about it, that instead that you cast your care on Him? Or will you regret that instead you've got farther away from God and maybe you've left Christianity altogether? Look, if I could boil down my message to you in a few sentences, it would be this. Stop worrying, my friend. Leave the consequences to Him. And not only that, but keep going forward. And you know what God promises us if we do? Let's look at verse 33 again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And notice this, this is so good. And all these things shall be added unto you. Look, you know what God promises us if we do this? He will take care of every need that we have in His own perfect plan. Jesus says to us, take no thought. Stop worrying. Stop worrying. But instead He says to us, 
Trust me, trust me, trust me. Will you rest today in God's care in this world of worry? Let us ask Philippians 1 verse 6 says, being confident, not worrisome, not anxious, but confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God calls us to focus on trusting him through our trials, even throughout this time. What will you do as we live in this world of worry?